Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run an investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And lately, many of you have been asking me what I think about Cardone Capital, which is a rapidly growing real estate crowdfunding platform. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you five reasons why I personally wouldn't invest in it and why I think that REITs, publicly listed REITs, are much better investment opportunities. So the first reason, I think that the funds that are managed by Cardone Capital suffer very significant conflicts of interest. And this is because they have an external management structure. Now, what this essentially means is that the fund is going to outsource the management to an outside entity, in this case, Cardone Capital or one of its affiliates. And this creates a lot of conflicts of interest because the manager is gonna go earn fees for the management of this fund. These fees are gonna be things like an asset management fee that's tied to the, the assets on the management. So it might be 1% of the total assets each year. They're also gonna earn acquisition fees, which is gonna incentivize them to buy as many assets as possible, uh, in disposition fees, which might incentivize them to sell the property. Different type of fees that create different type of uh, conflicts of interest, but really the main one is that since they earn an asset management fee that's tied to the total as volume of assets, they're gonna be incentivized to grow as large as possible. And this is why you see all the time platforms like Cardon Capital try to do the next deal. All the time they're doing deals. And so if you look at in the past, past, um, leading up to the great financial crisis, this type of externally managed vehicles, which are very common in the, in the private equity world, they kept buying more and more assets in 2005, 2006. I'll put a chart on the screen. Even as prices were really high, uh, leading up to the crash of 2008, 2009, REITs, on the other hand, they kept selling these assets to these private, private equity players at, at ridiculous prices. Um, and, and this is largely because of this conflict of interest. REITs, on the other hand, they do a much better job at mitigating these conflicts because they are internally managed, which is the opposite of the external management structure that I described earlier. Internal management structure, instead of outsourcing the management, the REIT is going to hire the manager as an employee of the REIT. And so they're not gonna earn any fees. Instead, they're gonna be earning salaries, which are typically tied to some type of performance indicators that are reflective of real shareholder value creation. So it's it's not enough for the REIT to just raise more equity and buy more properties if it doesn't create value on a per share basis. On the contrary, if they do dilutive equity races, over time, the, the manager is probably gonna get fired or get a pay reduction because this is gonna be hurting shareholders. And to add to this, today, the few externally managed publicly listed REITs, they are actually punished with much lower valuations than their internally managed counterparts. And so clearly this shows you that the market uh, is much more fearful of these externally managed vehicles because they suffer more conflicts of interest and, and it also leads to higher management costs, which is going to be my next point. And so reason number two, I think that the management cost of these vehicles managed by Cardon Capital is gonna be a lot higher than that of publicly listed REITs. Um, I went through their website quickly, I studied some material that I found online, and it seems that in many cases, they're gonna take a 1% asset management fee, but also a 1% acquisition fee, a 1% disposition fee, and then they'll still have a promote, uh, a profit sharing above a certain return hurdle. I, in some cases, it was above 6%, which is a pretty low hurdle, by the way. And so that's very expensive. That's um, some of the most expensive uh, fees that I've seen uh, for, for these crowdfunding platforms. I see on their website that they they quite, uh, I think that the marketing is quite misleading because they make it seem as if they're using this technology to, to lower the cost and cut the middleman. But Cardone Capital is effectively here the middleman and they are charging really high fees for it. Uh, that's why they are so happy to always try to raise more equity uh, to, to increase their fee income. REITs on the other hand, some studies have been done comparing the, the management costs of publicly listed REITs and those of uh, private equity funds like those of uh, Cardone Capital. and and uh, the results are that the, the cost of public listed REITs is a lot lower. Typically, it might be around 50 basis points of assets each year. And again, this is thanks to the internal management structure, which allows to have real economies of scale because now if, if a REIT buys a new property, it's not gonna automatically increase its fees. It's still earning those salaries. Uh, and so you have economies of scale and as a shareholder, you benefit this from the long run in the form of higher returns. So reason number three, 
I'm convinced that publicly listed REITs are going to generate higher total returns than the vehicles managed by Cardone Capital in most cases. And this is not just my own opinion. There's been actually quite a few studies made on this topic. I'll put some on the screen here. But what these research pieces show us is that publicly listed REITs typically outperform private equity vehicles by two, three to four percent per year. And it really makes sense when you think about it. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, publicly listed REITs do a much better job at aligning the interest between the manager and investors thanks to their internal management structure. They also have very significant economies of scale. They have better access to capital. Uh, you know, they can also access public capital. They can access public uh, preferred equity, uh, issue public bonds, a lot of different things to optimize their cost of capital and earn higher spreads. And there are plenty of other reasons uh, that I've discussed actually in a, in a separate article. I'll put a link in the description. Then reason number four, despite earning higher returns, I think that public listed REITs are also a lot safer than the vehicles managed by Cardinal Capital. Here, you, you don't really need to, to be a rocket scientist to understand why. I mean, REITs are, are liquid, they're public, they're highly diversified, they're professionally managed, they're highly scrutinized by the SEC, public analysts. Uh, they typically use a lot less leverage. And so now compare that to Cardinal Capital. Uh, I studied a few of its funds. Typically, it's going to use a lot more leverage than, than REITs. Typically, REITs might use 40% LTV, Cardon Capital might use 60, 70, or even 75 in some cases I saw, which is a lot of leverage, leaves very little room for error. I saw that very often they use variable rate uh, debt, uh, despite using so much debt, so much debt which uh, also increases risks very significantly, especially in today's rising interest rate environment. Then you have the risks of having these conflicts of interest and being illiquid, so you, despite there being a lot of conflicts of interest you cannot get out if you want to if things uh, if you notice that your 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 own interests are not well respected you, you're just stuck in there for potentially 10 years to come um, your, your investment is going to be more concentrated because typically you're going to be investing in one specific fund that's going to own one or a few properties but they surely won't own hundreds or thousands of properties like many REITs and so you're going to take a lot more risk when investing in these private vehicles managed by Cardon Capital and so the last reason perhaps the most important one today. Publicly listed REITs are very heavily discounted right now. In 2022, their share prices dropped very significantly, even as their cash flow kept on growing. And as a result, now you have a lot of REITs that are priced at uh, large discounts to the net asset value. Just to give you a quick example that comes to my head right now, BSR REIT is an apartment REIT that specializes in class B communities in rapidly growing Texan cities. It has a strong balance sheet, a great management team, and yet today it's priced at a 35% discount to its net asset value. So by buying its shares, you essentially get to buy its, an interest in its real estate at 65 cents on the dollar. Now compare that to investing in a fund managed by Cardone Capital. Here you're gonna be paying full price and then despite that, you're still gonna have all the issues that I mentioned earlier. Greater conflicts of interest, much higher management cost, lower returns over time because of all these disadvantages, uh, much greater risk because it's illiquid, concentrated, uh, highly leveraged, I mean, many things. Uh, and so why would you pay full price to have this when you could have invest in the publicly listed REIT, which has all these other advantages and yet it's still today discounted. And so these are all the reasons why I personally wouldn't invest in the funds managed by Cardone Capital. I think that you could do a lot better in the publicly listed REIT sector. I'm currently working on a few videos highlighting some of my favorite investment opportunities. So please make sure to subscribe, like this video and see you at my next one. Bye bye.